and let's predict Utah versus Baylor. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move on over to previewing uh, the University of Utah versus Baylor, shall we? Absolutely. So real quickly, I do want to recap the SUU game, right? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that first. Yeah, so, I mean, Utah jumps out, obviously, to a 35-point lead before the half. Um, they only allow 150 yards of total offense in the whole game. Honestly, it didn't even feel like that. The Utes kind of just stopped them time and time again, forced them behind the sticks. And then and then obviously, when you're, when you're pretty consistent at that, you put them in obvious passing situations, which is really just a, a bad day for SUU. Yes, you did have one stat that was significantly higher than Utah's. Are you ready for this? Eight punts for 292 yards. Oh, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> when you're punting yards, it <laughs> almost double your offense. Yeah. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> wow. That's, 292 yards of punting. That's tough. That's tough. I mean, on the, on the flip side, the Utes do lose Keenan Johnson in this game. Yeah, that, um, was, that was a big hurt, man. He's out for the season. Yep. Keenan yeah. Johnson loss is huge, dude. I mean, he's a Georgia Tech transfer. Looks like he's probably just going to attempt a redshirt this season. Um, they said he's, you know, already preparing to come back next season strong. As Utes fans, that's not how we wanted the season to start, really. Mm-hmm. Um, especially after we fight, after we fought so many obviously tough injuries last year. Uh, but they do have some pretty good depth of that position. Cam Calhoun from Michigan, Smith Snowden, Scooby Davis. Um, Scooby Davis actually had an interception, the one interception of the game. So they've got some options. I think the I think they'll be just fine at the position. But yeah, I mean, they, they used to care of business. They did what they were supposed to. No, I think I agree. I mean, did you uh, see my text? I texted you before the game started. I was at the game. I don't remember. Okay. So before the game started, before kickoff happened, I texted him. The score would be 49 to six. Oh, did you? Yes. And uh, I was. You almost nailed that. Almost nailed it. Almost. Yeah. So I was close. I thought that there would be either like a, like a couple of field goals there in garbage time, you know, but other than that, I, I thought that, I thought we'd get that. But yeah, so good. Good job. It's good. You know, basically doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, which is, you know, laying down the hammer and winning the games that you need to win. That game came away exactly the way we wanted. We did not want to see. That was my key takeaway. I did want to have everybody yep. come off the field healthy and not lose any key contributors for the season. But it looks like we fell a little bit short on that one. So, yeah, other than that, we, we kind of kind of nailed that one, though. Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> sure did. All right. We want to hear from you folks. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought of the Utah versus SUU game. And uh, now let's go ahead and move on over to uh, Utes versus Baylor, shall we? Yeah, let's preview Baylor. You want to you wanna start or you want me to start? Yeah. So when it comes to the Utes there, we, uh, we're we playing Baylor. This is non-conference game, even though the Baylor, Baylor Bears are part of the Big 12. Uh, this game is actually going down Saturday afternoon. So... Cue the famous quote, not in the afternoons anymore. Remember, yep. We got a game in the afternoon. Utes are favored on this one by a spread. I've seen it two different ways. I've seen it by three different sites at 15, and I also have seen it at 14.5. So the Utes have the hook there. So um, when I see that there, the, also the over under on that one when it comes to the total points is 56.5 points. Uh, so that's kind of what we have there as far as the line goes. Um, I see the Utes covering this line, honestly. I think the Utes cover this quite well. I don't think it's going to be that close. I don't know. What's your thoughts? So, I mean, we all remember how this game went last year, right? Mm-hmm. The Utes really, really struggled to move the ball. You know, they Bryson Barnes was really struggling. They put Nate Johnson in in the third quarter. He takes over, gets us a couple touchdowns. We pull away with a win at a Waco. Guaranteed every single Baylor's returning a ton of starters. Right. All these guys have got that fresh in their mind. That that loss was huge. This Utah team was not favored going into Waco last year. No. Um, especially without Cam Rising. It was, you know, at this point he was still kind of week to week, wasn't sure. We found out he wasn't gonna go. You know, it, it kind of happens. So the Bears defense should be much better this year. They've got a little bit more experience, obviously a whole year under their belt. But the, the big thing here is Utah's offense, offensive firepower is much different than it was last year. Yeah. In all of our in all of our Utah football content, we talk about the, the, the mass array of weapons as far as Brant Keithy, Dorian Singer, you know, tight ends for days. We've got wide receivers. Um, Money Parks, uh, I think, is going to have an awesome an awesome season, too. And then. And then the Utes, you know, in that first game, first game versus FCU, we kind of see another player kind of break out in Dijon Stanley. This was kind of a, a, a breath of fresh air to see somebody that we didn't really think was going to be as impactful as he really ended up being. I do hope that the Utes kind of put together some packages for him to continue to let him run the ball, catch the ball down the field. The dude is crazy, ridiculous fast. I I almost see the Utes kind of transitioning him out of because he's technically listed as a running back mm-hmm. in this role, but I could almost see him being used as like a Britton Covey type player. He's almost the exact same size. Okay, um, He's got a great ability to catch the football. 
he's quick, he's shifty. So hopefully they use Stanley a little bit more this year and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of keep going with that. So Baylor's kind of th- their, their hope for this season, a hundred percent lies in quarterback Dequan Finn. Um, he's a dual threat quarterback. He's a six year senior. Uh, he transferred from Toledo last year where he was the Mac player of the year last season. Right. Uh, he did throw two interceptions in his game against FCS Tarleton state um, <laughs> yeah. in their 45 to three win. So that's got to be a little concerning for those guys. I mean, you shouldn't be throwing any interceptions, but you know, it totally happens. Finn, Finn does have some explosiveness. You know, his first drive, he runs the ball 30, 39 yards for a touchdown. So this guy's more than happy to tuck the ball, you know, make a run, go for it. Um, and, and in the past, these mobile quarterbacks have absolutely given Utah some trouble. So Utah's just got to, Utah's just got to stay, you know, stay net positive, make sure they get, get him behind the sticks, mm-hmm. force him in obvious passing situations. And uh, it'll, it'll definitely be an advantage Utah. Yeah, definitely have an advantage on the quarterback position there. First, first let's, we talk about Finn and he's uh, a fifth year senior. Sixth year. Sixth year senior. Yep. Take that, I'll raise you one. Cam Rising is a seven year. Boom. So there you go. How right many there. seventh year seniors are there? Exactly. I uh, want to know. I want to hear it, folks. Uh, but yeah, he's also got 250, uh, 254 yards uh, and a 66.7 uh, completion passage. Uh, Rising does comparatively to, to uh, Finn's 192, uh, 63.6 uh, passing percentage so far this season. Five touchdowns, no interceptions for Cam Rising. Two touchdowns, two interceptions for, Cam, for Finn. So I think that one's kind of... I think we're okay there. Yeah. I mean, experience is a huge thing. Obviously Cam has ability to throw the ball up the field. So this, I I think that this is going to be a fantastic game, right? This is, this is going to be a fun one to watch. It's not going to be like the SCU game where it's just Utah lighting them up every time they get the ball. Um, There should be some nice back and forth and and it's going to be a good kind of early measuring stick for Utah in the big 12 conference, right? This is, this is a talented conference. This is a talented football team. Um, I'm really hoping that Cam can kind of come in, control the tempo of this game, put together some calculated drives, run some clock, get a comfortable victory, get Cam out of there if we need to. My prediction is Utah 35, Baylor 7. I like it. I like it. Yeah, so that, that definitely covers the line um, So as well. So that's kind of right about where I was at. Um, I, I didn't think it was – I was going to be 31-7. That was where I'm sitting. How about your boy Isaac Wilson, man, getting to uh, get some time on the field there? He did. I mean, and the coaches were pretty clear about uh, – you know, they put him in a pretty tough situation to end the second half. And I don't know, man. I'm all for it, man. I'm all for no, it. I love I think it. he got some great experience that he that he absolutely needed to to see. I mean, just just going in in that kind of high pressure situation where you're almost forced to pass the ball because they were trying to score a touchdown. Right. I mean, that was the whole goal was vertical passing and you know, punch one more in before before halftime. So they put him in a tough situation. He throws a pick, but honestly, he looked pretty good. I think he did I, I mean, too. I his, think he settled down a little bit. He settled down in the second half. He he made some better decisions. He's way quicker than I thought he was out of yeah. the pocket, man. His arm's got a really good lively yeah, arm. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, I, like he, it. I was impressed. I really liked Isaac Wilson. Um, hopefully, he gets to play against Baylor, man. Yeah, I'm hoping he gets he gets some time in there for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to find SUU though. Some of that money they got. What are they doing going after Cam on like I'm taking that t- Cam taking that kind of hit? I'm like, dude, whoa. Well, Cam wasn't helping himself, man. Dude's <laughs> out there trying to mow people over. And I was just like, Cam, what are you doing? <laughs> every and it's funny because you could feel it in the stadium, dude. Every time Cam was running, it was like, oh, don't do it. Don't do it, Cam. Stop. Yeah. Yep. No, it's good. It's good to get him out of there. It's good to see Brent Keefe score three touchdowns. It's good to see the injury, injury players from last year back now. Yeah. Uh, after kicking out the rest and seeing it. So look forward to Saturday's game. You and I both will be there. Yes. Uh, we're not going together because we're just not tied like that, but we will be at the wow. <laughs> I was not aware. <laughs> no, we definitely both will be at the game there. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh so it should be it should be a good time this weekend. Looking forward to it for sure. Um you got anything else on the use before we move on? No, no. It should be a good game this week, man. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to talk about it next week too. Absolutely. <laughs>